Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about the chain rule, which is what to do if you have a function inside another function and how to find the derivative of that. I'm not going to read all of this to you, but you need to read through this to see the difference between plain functions and functions that are composite functions. Um, usually there's parentheses involved with composite functions, but sometimes, especially with trig functions, we don't write it that way. Like, for example, y equals cosine cubed of x, that is a composite function. It's the cosine function inside the x cubed function. This takes a lot of practice, so uh, let's get after it. Uh, this is a general chain rule. If you have a function to a power, then you do your regular power rule, but then you're going to end up multiplying times the derivative of the inside function or the inside quantity. So our calculus book writes uh, the chain rule as if you have g inside of f, then the derivative is going to be f prime of g of x and then times the derivative of the inside, which will be times g prime of x. That's how our calculus book writes the chain rule. So let's take a look at a several examples. I've got a function inside another function, so I'm going to find the derivative by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is 5 times 4x cubed plus 3x minus 2 to the fourth power. Notice what I've done is I've brought the 5 down. I left the inside completely alone. You see how this g of x is still left alone? You don't change it at all yet. You leave it alone. So I'll bring the 5 down. I've got the inside untouched. And then we subtracted 1 off of the 5 to get to the 4. That's usual. Just please remember, keep the, leave this inside alone. Then multiply times the derivative of the inside. So that would be times 12x squared plus 3. And that would be our answer. Another example, you, uh, let's bring the two-thirds down. So two-thirds times x to the fourth plus two to the negative one-third power. Notice how x to the fourth plus two is left alone. Just do the derivative of the outside now times the derivative of the inside, which would be 4x cubed. And again, we're not going to simplify for now. We're just learning the process. Uh, here's another example where I would probably want to rewrite this first. I'm not going to use the quotient rule usually if I just have a constant in the numerator. So I'm going to take my denominator, move it to the top, and put a neg negative exponent on it. Now I'm going to, you see parentheses to a power, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So the derivative is going to be 14 times 2x minus 3 to the negative 3 power times 2. That would be the derivative of that. Um, here, I'm going to need to use the quotient rule. I'm going to rewrite this, however, as 5x over x squared plus 2. Oh, let me undo that. A little boo-boo there. Sorry about that. Um, x squared plus 2 to the 1 third power. So let's use a quotient rule. It's the bottom, x squared plus 2 to the 1 third times the derivative of the top, low d high minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Now the derivative of the bottom is going to be one-third times x squared plus two to the negative two-thirds power and then times what? Times the derivative of the inside times two x. So there's, and that's all over the bottom squared. So if we square that we're going to get, well I'll just write it, x squared plus two to the one-third all squared. And do you know what we would get when we take a power to a power? Do you remember how to do that? I think you do. All right, so let's take a look at some trig examples. Um, if I have cosine of 3x, I've got 3x inside of cosine. So we're going to do the derivative of the outside function. Um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But then we're going to multiply times the derivative of the inside, times 3. And you might see this written as negative 3 sine of 3x. So what about sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. And notice how we're leaving the inside function alone. So it's cosine of 5x squared and then times 10x. Derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant of 7x to the fifth. Cotangent of 7x to the fifth. I'm going to run out of room. Ah, times 35x to the fourth. Now the really, really difficult ones are when they're hidden. This is actually a function 5x inside of cosine, and cosine is actually inside of x to the fourth power. You might want to rewrite these 
as cosine of 5x all raised to the fourth power. Here I'm going to have to use the chain rule twice. So this will be your derivative. It's 4 times cosine of 5x cubed. Now times negative sine of 5x, that's the derivative of cosine, times 5. So we did the derivative of the outside function. Basically, something to the fourth is 4 times something cubed. Then the derivative of the inside function, derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then we had another inside function of 5x. Um, th that can be, you know, rather difficult. So what about secant? Well, I'll rewrite this as secant of 4x cubed plus 5 all squared. So my derivative will be 2 times secant of 4x cubed plus 5 to the first. I'm not going to write to the first. Now times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. This is going to be long. I'm going to have to use two uh, rows here. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. So secant of 4x cubed plus 5 tangent of 4x cubed plus 5. Now I'm still not done. Now times 12x squared. Man, that was a mess. All right, the derivative of tangent of sine x. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of sine x. Now times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Last example. Um, we've got a, these little data points here. And I'm, I've got a function h at, that is f of g of x. So I want to find h prime of 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is find h prime of x. That would be directly from our definition. It's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So now let's find out what h prime of 3 would be. h prime of 3 would be f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. So I just replaced those x's with 3. So let's see what that is. Let's see. Um, g of 3 is where are you right here g of 3 is 4 so I'm working inside out so I need to do f prime of 4 times g prime of 3 where is f prime of 4 where are you ah there you are f prime of 4 is 8 where is g prime of 3 g prime of 3 is negative 5 my answer is negative 40 and I will see you guys tomorrow